The new Western Sydney International Airport is a massive project that's been the subject of several debates since it was proposed by the federal leader of Australia's National Party in 2014. On paper, a fancy new airport sounds like a no-brainer, but with countless taxpayer dollars spent on reviews and consultations, the $11 billion airport might be nothing but a logistical nightmare. The Australian government has tried to justify its construction, but more people are beginning to feel it's just a white elephant project. So why exactly has the Australian government picked this site for an airport and what makes it a terrible decision? Anyone who knows a thing or two about massive infrastructure projects knows that they take a lot of money and man hours to execute. The Western Sydney International Airport follows this trend as the plans for a second major airport in Sydney date back to the 1980s when the federal government of Australia chose Badgeries Creek for its subsequent big development. After several decades of procrastination, construction began began at Badgeries Creek site in 2018, despite the issues looming over the project. Sydney's current airport, Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport, is Australia's biggest and one of the oldest airports in the world. The 102-year-old airport is the busiest in Australia, catering to over 44 million passengers a year. While the airport might have been great back in the day, a myriad of problems from limited land space to runways shutdowns due to erratic weather have made a case for a new airport in Sydney. The new airport would have to meet increasing passenger and airline demand in the medium to long term, and this is where Badgeries Creek comes in. Situated 43 kilometres west of Sydney Kingsford Smith, the next airport will have to outperform its predecessor. The plans for Western Sydney Airport include a single 3,700 by 60 metre runway, a full length parallel taxiway with rapid exit taxiways, and a 65,000 square metre terminal capable of handling 10 million passengers a year. The terminal roof will be installed with solar power generation capacity that will also be able to harvest rainwater. The terminal will include landscape gardens, entertainment venues and dining and retail spaces. The entrance of the terminal will feature soaring timber ceilings, while vertical gardens will enhance the airport's beauty. Retail developments at the terminal will include speciality retail restaurants and cafes. An outdoor plaza will be built to host events such as food festivals, markets and community celebrations. The first runway will be 3,700 metres long and will be capable of handling 63,000 aircraft movements a year. At total capacity, it will handle approximately 185,000 aircraft movements and 37 million passengers a year. This includes the largest jets currently available, like the next generation of ultra-long-haul aircraft such as the Airbus A350-1000 and the Boeing 77X. Construction of the second runway will be initiated based on demand by 2050. The airfield will be able to support emerging technologies such as electric aircraft in the future. It will include 3,000 aeronautical ground lights, more than 40 kilometers of roads, and 90 kilometers of power and fiber optic cabling. Western Sydney International is being built as a 24-hour curfew-free operation and will supplement Kingsford Smith Airport. There are also plans for a motorway that will link Sydney's main motorway network. Like most larger projects, the airport will be built in phases, with the initial construction phase including building a smaller airport with a single runway. However, developers expect a 40-year time frame for the four phases needed to complete the project. The initial development cost was estimated at $1.5 billion as of 2012 and would generate 4,000 jobs. This has increased significantly since then. With a total estimated cost of $11 billion, the Western Sydney International Airport is the eighth most expensive project in Australia. The Australian Government and the Government of New South Wales are jointly partnering to finance and deliver rail links to the airport jointly. The Australian Government has pledged to contribute $5.3 billion to the project, which includes $26 million to develop a detailed concept design for rail access on the airport grounds. The government believes that the project will not only provide a boost to Sydney's long-term aviation capacity, but will also act as a catalyst for economic development, creating high-quality jobs and business opportunities across the region. So far, we've only talked about the best parts of the Western Sydney International Airport, but there is another side to the story. Make sure to watch to the end of this video to find out why some people think the airport is a white elephant project. 
To the uninitiated, everything looks set for the construction of an airport that will successfully meet the demand of air travellers, but critical issues remain. The first problem that the new airport faces is the lack of a pipeline system to provide fuel for the airplanes that land on its strip. Most large airports have one or more pipelines that supply fuel to the site directly. These pipelines connect either to a regional delivery hub or directly to the local refineries to make supply efficient. The developers of the Western Sydney Airport believe that the airport will be open by December 2026, yet it hasn't sorted out this fuel supply issue. Reports show that the authorities have just started investigating the potential for a pipeline system in the early 2030s. In the meantime, Western Sydney Airport will get its fuel via large trucks, which will haul enormous amounts of fuel to the airport every day. When the airport reaches total capacity, these trucks may need to make several deliveries which would add to congestion on Sydney's urban road network. This will potentially compromise motorist safety, increase congestion and cause delays to freight corridors. The long-term ambition of Western Sydney is to handle 82 million passengers annually, but it may never achieve those numbers with the current setup using delivery trucks. The new Western Sydney International Airport is a massive project. At 1,780 hectares, it will be twice the size of Kingsford Smith. For an airport of this scale, you don't need to be a genius to see that it will be a logistical nightmare for everyone involved. Sydney Kingsford Smith already has 11 kilometres of underground piping supplying the 1,500 aircraft that must be refuelled daily. Now, most developers understand that projects like airports require infrastructure which will be built before the airport, but this hasn't been the case with Western Sydney International Airport. The airport is at serious risk of opening without crucial public transport connections because of significant delays to funding from the state and federal government. The State Agency for Transportation has raised concerns over the lack of funding for three rapid bus links. As part of a city deal signed in 2018, the state government committed to opening rapid bus links from the three city centres to the international airport. There were plans for the purchase of 100 new double-decker buses to ply key routes linking Liverpool, Penrith and Campbelltown to the new airport. Another essential infrastructure project absent from the Western Sydney International Airport is a metro rail link. Reports show that the state government would have to cough up $2.6 billion if they want to avoid road network congestion, making the already expensive airport even more pricey. Delays to the airport's public transport project mean that upon opening, it will be a cumbersome task for travellers who choose Western Sydney International. The construction of Western Sydney International Airport also encounters some unexpected issues that threatened its development. The first major problem the developers faced came in the form of the global pandemic, which affected the budget and schedule of the project massively. As statewide lockdowns came into effect, construction on the Western Sydney International Airport had to take a backseat. Australia also suffered from massive rainfall in 2021, which made the government declare many parts of the East Coast a natural disaster zone after the flooding forced 18,000 people to evacuate. So, although the project is planned to move forward, there will undoubtedly be huge hurdles to jump for it to be considered a success.